Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hexen, where today we'll be playing through Hub 4, Castle of Grief, with the fighter on Titan difficulty getting all kills. You have played this game too long, mortal. I think I shall be moving from the board. And I'm just trying to fight a Chaos Serpent while I'm waiting for Korax here. You can usually hit him if you aim right, but I don't think I have to, given that he's still alive even after another hammer there. There's a bunch of ranged attackers here and a couple of enemies that don't really care for us. I will be talking about those enemies in a second, but provided you do not touch the water or the bridge, then some of the enemies will not actually be attacking you during this fight, so that's convenient. And with that, I will first be dealing with a couple of Dark Bishops and a couple of Chaos Serpents and a single Slotar there. Now, these are dormant enemies, and we've seen a couple of these before. Most notably, probably the one in the fight with the Death Wyvern. They are completely indestructible until they are activated. You can move them around, but even with these instant death spikes or with cheats, while the spike becomes bloody and while the cheat kills everyone else, these enemies will actually stay alive until they are activated, which in this case is when you jump into the water to press one of those switches. There's one over there. And one over there as well, which will raise this bridge. But we're just going to wait with that a little while. You can use them as platforms as well, so you can reach slightly higher areas than usual. And that's exactly what we're going to do to make life a little bit easier here. So you can push this one towards the wall, uh, and you can quite easily use them as a platform to reach that place. But there's a couple of stalkers in the water as well, and you can do the same thing with them. Provided you do this jump right, you can just jump on the stalker that's actually still in the water and he does wake up the moment you jump on top of him just because you cross the line that wakes him up. But we can use this to, for one, get this Crater of Might and for two, get a couple of kills early and just clear out this outer wall a little bit quicker than usual, which really I feel makes life a little bit easier because it makes uh, going up there in the future just a little bit safer. Let's see if we can get these enemies to infight. And while we're up here anyway, we can also do a small button puzzle. The outer wall has four switches that you have to press. It is going to raise an area for later, or lower it rather. And since we have to do that anyway, might as well do it now since we're in this outer wall anyway. But it's mostly just going to be slowly but surely killing a large quantity of slaughters and also occasionally a regular centaur as well if they come around and feel like dying but also a couple of Chaos Serpents which are hiding around here. And there's also a bunch of Ettons, as you can see. And sometimes a Dark Bishop. I'm not really sure how that happens. Because sometimes this Dark Bishop shows up and other times it doesn't. I think it's one that's inside one of the structures here and he actually manages to get out. I'm not going to worry about it too much. You might see him or you might see him a little bit later. You can also use these Gargoyles to jump on top of them and actually get onto the raised area as well, but it's not really consistent. Whereas jumping on top of the Stalker actually has a backup plan where you just use an Etten instead and it makes some options possible and I kind of like getting rid of this area first. Moving on ahead, this is going to lead inside the castle and we'll do, be doing that a little bit later. There is two more switches to press on this outer wall right here and a bunch more Chaos Serpents to kill in these tiny gated areas. And fighting these now especially is just very nice to get out of the way because later on it is definitely possible to fight them with flechettes or something like that when you're in that uh, structure itself. But I just find this a little bit safer. Switch number three is over here. And next to this portal, which we'll be going through a little bit later, there is a bunch of health available, which is why I hadn't used any quartz flasks yet. Because why not use these instead? And moving on, we should be reaching the fourth switch soon. Just a couple of slaughters and gargoyles and such. Occasionally causing a little bit of infighting with the Ettons as well, but the Ettons are unfortunately not very capable of dealing with those issues. Eventually, we'll make it through. You might run out of green mana after a while by doing this, but that's okay. You can just go back to the start of the level and grab some more if needed. But if you are fully stacked on green mana, you could um, just about kill everything here. Plus there is the Crater of Might at the start of this circle as well so you do have some options available but over here should be the fourth switch another gargoyle to destroy 
and we are waking up a variety of enemies here, so it can get rather dicey if you're not too careful. But it seems like things are going okay. Let's see if we can just kill that last remaining slaughterer over there. Fortunately, my auto-aim decided not to attack him while he was blocking, so that was convenient. Now we have eight green mana left, which is more than enough to deal with these enemies here, since we can just axe everyone here to death. Now we are back at the start of level, so we can replenish some of our green mana. There's a couple of stalkers still alive, including the one I jumped on top of and used as a platform. And there is uh, one more kind of interesting thing, which I will just get into in a little bit. But first, just dealing with the remaining enemies here. I think there's two stalkers in the water here, but I'm not 100% certain. But let's see. Either way, this little waterway right here, a little bit interesting, is that it's slightly higher than the one on the other side. This is apparently something they changed in Hexen 1.1. Because there is a portal behind this, which we can access a lot later in this chapter. And if we were basically able to use a porculator on a blocking centaur to turn ourselves into a pig and, and enter that portal right now, you'd be able to skip most of this hub, which is unfortunate that they changed it because it would have made for an entertaining route. But as it stands, we're just going to have to take the normal way. So I'm going to pull these two switches right here. That is going to create a small staircase that we can use as a bridge. And we can use... Um, we can now enter the actual Castle of Grief, where... Because we did that little uh, puzzle, the switch puzzle on the outer walls, there's going to be a couple more enemies inside this tower. Also, I will be using the sword a little bit more during this chapter, simply due to the fact that there is a lot of ammo available. So occasionally I will just be using it against Chaos Serpents in particular because it's just a nice way to get rid of them. Now over here there's going to be a couple more Dark Bishops and also a puzzle item that we can grab. Uh, the puzzle item in particular is the one sitting up over there. But I will actually leave it there for now so I can grab all four required puzzle items to continue in one go. Whereas if I would grab it now it might get a little bit confusing. So. I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna grab a little bit more green mana and maybe kill a couple more enemies before moving on to the portal that we somewhat ignored previously. Just gonna kill this last slaughter right here. Took a little bit of damage. Also there is still some chaos serpents that you can only attack from the inside of the castle here. So do be careful of that because they can catch you off guard rather easily. Occasionally they have a tendency to just shoot the ceiling instead of us which is nice but they can still deal a decent amount of damage if you're not careful. So just gonna clear out this final room right here. There is a couple chaos serpents that I'd like to just get out of the way. And the sword is more than capable of doing so. Plus we can immediately replenish some of our blue mana and our health as well inside this place. Before moving on to the Forsaken Outpost, which is hiding over here. Now the Forsaken Outpost, um, we mostly need to go here for a puzzle that is a little bit later in this hub. But it's nice to just get the puzzle items. We're going to be collecting two books. And also the entrance to the secret level should be available here. Now with our sword we can easily dispatch of a couple of chaos serpents here. Even from a distance the weapon is rather powerful so definitely recommend it. Plus there is a lot of green mana at the start of this uh, level as well. And a lot of blue mana also so you can, you can immediately replenish that before moving on. Singular Etna over here, but he's pretty much stuck, so that's nice. And there's a bunch of Discs of Repulsion over there. And since there's a bunch of them over there anyway, we might as well start using them. So I will open the door and then just press the 9 button a bunch. Uh, since there is a bunch of ranged attackers here, and if we just do that, just use a bunch of Discs of Repulsions while running forward, everyone is likely to be infighting with each other. And that just makes life a little bit easier. Even the centaurs should be fighting with each other, hopefully, and otherwise we can all just funnel them into this tiny room right here and more easily deal with them that way. There is still a Chaos Serpent up here as well, and I'm not sure if he was in fighting with anyone, but it's no problem at all, as the main danger has been taken care of. It's quite a lot of ranged attackers that you're dealing with here, and just having everyone fight with each other this way is just really nice. 
Now, before moving on, just gonna grab the, this repulsion right there. Eventually, a bridge will be created here, which will make it a little bit easier to reach it, but you can also just jump there. Plus, I kind of want to walk over this edge right here to aggro a couple of Dark Bishops before moving back onwards to the next area. Those Dark Bishops will come up eventually. If not, I will fly to them later, but hopefully that won't be necessary. And also, there's a helmet right here which we might as well grab, plus a couple of health power-ups as well. Now, the main area place that we can actually access right now is this dark room. When we pull the switch, it's going to open up a door which leads to the first of two puzzle items which we want to collect in this level, which is a book with the letter A on it. And when we grab it, it's going to open up a bunch of walls. It has a bunch of dark bishops behind it. And if we just clear out the room with our sword, or at least clear out a part of it, we can more easily deal with the remaining enemies that are hiding behind the walls afterwards. So after dealing with that, we can see if the dark bishops have flown up. It does sound like some of them have, but also after picking that up, it has opened up a wall right here with two chaos serpents behind it. But one sword strike is enough to kill one of them and very much damage the other one as well. And over here, there should be three dark bishops and there are, so that's good. So we no longer have to worry about those, but those were the three enemies hiding inside the pit right there. Now, since we have lowered this wall, we can also pull this to access a couple of Ethnons and also replenish a bunch more discs of repulsion if need be. There's some flechettes up there as well if you need them. And also, one more thing which is available to us now is the rusted key, which is going to be useful for that door over there. But also it opened up this little cave with a couple of dark bishops behind it, which isn't immediately great, but if you are running a little low on ammo, it might be useful to go here first. Uh, there is also some health available in this pit, which is definitely the reason why I jumped down there. But if you cross this pit right here, grab the porculator in front of this switch, you open up a tiny doorway over here with a bunch of ammo. But there's also a wall over here which looks a little different, and we will be coming out of there later, and it's nice to just have the ammo available for later as well. So I will leave it alone for now. Also, there is one more dormant gargoyle over here. He will wake up a little bit later, kind of in an odd time, but he'll wake up when he wakes up. For now, I'm gonna use our rusted key to enter this door. And after entering this door, uh, it is going to start spawning a bunch of enemies in a second. There's a bunch of doors which are barred from the inside when you use them. But if we just wait at the door right here, in a second after some infighting with the other enemies there as well, it should spawn a couple more centaurs and a slaughter as well, possibly a couple slaughters. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what spawns here, but it's a bunch of nastiness and I'd like to take care of it immediately. Also, one nice thing of dealing with all the enemies in the outer area of the previous level is that you can replenish a lot of your quartz flasks in this level. And it's just kind of nice to get all of those enemies out of the way and then get fully healed up and get fully stocked up on healing items as well. Our main goal here right now is to press four switches and each of these tiny rooms has a bunch of discs of repulsion and a switch which we can pull. And I will just be going through each of these four rooms to pull a switch in every single one of them, while occasionally also killing a couple enemies. There's some blue and green mana on these little rooms on the outside, and a couple more quartz flasks that I haven't collected yet, so I will be doing that every now and then. Might as well replenish our green mana while we're at it as well, and just kill a couple more regular centaurs that are not using their ranged attacks, so that is lovely. Switch number three right there and switch number four in this room. And when you push the fourth switch, it is going to spawn a couple enemies again. So I will just once again run back to the front door because it's a nice and open place to fight these enemies. There's a couple slaughters once again. And it's just nice to get those out of the way. Also, an Eden has somehow made his way here. He possibly is respawned, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Either way, not gonna worry about it too much and just fight these remaining slaughters, which have a tendency to converge on these little corners right here next to the door. They tend to have some difficulty actually getting through here. But overall, I think that went okay. And we can now grab the second puzzle item, which is this book with an O on it. And when we grab it, because we have done the secret level in hub one and hub two, we can now enter the secret level in this hub, which is this one. Now in this level, there's a couple of ranged attackers from the start, and our main goal is to press 
a whole bunch of switches. And every time we press two of the switches, it's going to open up something. And also, every time you pull one of the switches here in the middle, it's going to spawn a random enemy. And this enemy can range from a Slaughter to just a regular Eden or a Gargoyle and um, I think a Chaos Serpent as well. We've pulled one out of two switches so far. And I'm just going to deal with a couple of these Eddins as well. I'm going to pull switch number two. Usually I'll just have my sword out because of the Chaos Serpents that can't spawn. But because we've pulled two switches, this elevator has now lowered. And we can use this lowered area, or elevator rather, to get to this slightly higher place. We can get some green mana as well. And this counts as puzzle... Uh, mini puzzle one. <laughs> uh, because if you cross this line right here, it counts as having, well, crossed one of the two lines that we'd like to cross in order to get an extra item. We're gonna have to do the same thing on the elevator on the other side, but we're gonna have to press two more switches to be able to reach that. Forgot about actually holding the sword there, but it worked out because of our axemanship. So if we pull this switch right here, another Chaos Serpent spawns, and it should also lower the elevator on the other side in a second. Sometimes it can take a while, so be wary of that, but other than that, not much to worry about. Our blue mana is a little bit low, but that's okay, we can just use our hammer on this remaining Chaos Serpent. And since we have crossed this line as well now, we can wait here for a little bit, and this wall will eventually lower to reveal a slot arm but also a Crater of Might. This one's pretty missable. Um, eventually the Slaughter will just be firing at you from up here, but the Crater of Might especially might be rather missable, since uh, there's really no reason to go back up here again. As long as the second or the next switch hasn't raised, you can still pull the switch that has just lowered. And also, while another thing is currently opening, you can see the staircase lower right there, I will actually press two more switches before actually entering that staircase simply because the next time that we pull uh, a couple more switches it will open up a new area upstairs there as well so it's nice to just get everything out of the way at once now after pulling eight switches it is going to raise the switch in the middle and that is actually going to open up the level exit in this secret level and also spawn a couple of dark bishops which are easily taken care of because we are in a large courtyard now, there are two staircases which we can go up. Both are entirely covered with gargoyles and health items, so I will just be using my axe for a bit and slashing at everything that moves. And because we pulled the switch in the middle, this door on the right is now open with a couple of dark bishops and a whole bunch of ammo. And one nice thing about this level is that all three pieces of the ultimate weapon are available here. And if you already have all three pieces, then they are effectively combined mana power-ups. So, Makes life a little bit easier. Just gonna go down the stairs here first before moving on in that side path over there, which we hadn't entered yet. Probably didn't need to do that on a singular Eden, but you know, there's actually so much mana here that it honestly doesn't matter too much. Now over here is a small trap. There's a couple of centaurs over here. And when we wait here for a little bit, the water starts to rise. And if you don't press the switch that's right there, the little skeleton switch, then you will get crushed by the water raising. So let's press that. And you may have already noticed that there was a Chaos Serpent on the other side of this wall who usually has a difficult time actually seeing you. Not sure why, but it is what it is. Also, you can get another piece of the sword and this tiny thing opens, which is only relevant in Deathmatch. So you can still jump there at least, but it's not exactly useful, unfortunately. Now... Having done all that, we are missing two enemies, and they are likely to be respawned Ettons that are probably hanging out over here. And with that, we have completed this secret level that we have been building up for the last three videos. So I hope you it was worth the wait. But with that, let's move on. Back to where we came from and onwards to where we can actually use those books. We're still missing a couple enemies here. Uh, we're gonna be missing six in particular and probably one respawn Eden because we cannot reach those right just yet. But that's okay. We'll be getting those in a minute. First, just gonna check if there's a respawn Eden over here. If not, there might... Actually, I know who we missed. We missed that one gargoyle that has woken up at this point uh, after we opened up the room with the book in it. So yeah, here we go. There is a gargoyle right there. I don't know why he takes so long to wake up, but at least he wakes up at all. 
that sentence is going to be relevant for hub number five. <laughs> but moving on, we are going back to the Castle of Grief and let us enter the castle and collect four cogs which we need to place inside of these little rooms right here. There's a couple of missing ones and each one has a little symbol above it which indicates which cog you need. But once we collect all four of them, we can just place all four of them at once and not have to worry about what they look like. The first one is always available, it's right here, but it is trapped. It starts shooting a bunch of projectiles from these mouths. And these can range from just regular fireballs to porculator projectiles, so you can suddenly be turned into a pig. This one lowered because we pressed the outer wall switches previously, so we can grab that immediately. The third one is right here, also always available, but it is trapped with a couple of dark bishops showing up, which apparently there was a chaos serpent there as well, which dealt a lot of damage to me, but it worked out fortunately. And the fourth one is going to take a little bit longer, unfortunately, because the fourth one requires us to reach the higher area, which we killed all those sloth arms on previously. And to get there, we have to push this switch, which is going to activate the elevators on the start right here. There's also some elevators on the other side of the castle, but it doesn't really matter which one you go up to. We have to press five switches here, and there is probably still a couple of centaurs still alive, but we can hopefully deal with those rather easily with the things that we currently have available. And hopefully we have dealt at least with all of the ranged ones. Where did that one come from? <laughs> uh, it's a confusing game sometimes. Sometimes you wouldn't believe what happens. But mostly watch out for these giant holes in the middle of each of these rooms because they are instant death pits. There are also some flechettes in these tiny little areas where the, the chaos serpents were previously. But let us press button number one and move on to the next room which looks very similar, has green mana instead. Press another switch and do that three more times. This time we have to jump to the other side or use one of the elevators, but provided we know how to jump, we should be okay. Switch number three is right there. Moving on to the next one. Singular Edmund is still alive, but that's okay. One more switch. And then the last switch is right here. And a couple of health ups as well, which is lovely. Now, since we have pressed all five switches, there is also an amulet up there, which I forgot to grab, but for the fighter, it's not too useful anyway, because it only gives plus one AC. We can now go down here to grab this, but it is going to activate these fire spawners. So if you're a little careful, you can dodge these. I've never really managed to, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And since we have all the cogs now, we can place them inside here. And once you have placed all four cogs, this clock starts spinning, which is a fun little effect. But also a platform has lowered in the tower, which is the one we will be using as an elevator to reach the next level of this hub. There is also a dark servant waiting for us here, which is nice. And up here is a switch, which will teleport us to the next level. Going up ahead, just a couple gargoyles and a singular regular stalker in the water. Just gonna deal with the gargoyles first, because why not? And the stalker here as well, just to get it out of the way. It's easy to forget otherwise. You can't really do much of anything here, since it's just a very tiny pool. And we can now use our books up ahead over here, provided we can get past these very small group of Ettons, which somehow block my path entirely. Both of these bookcases you can open up by using them as a door. And there is a large quantity of bookcases waiting for us in this library. Now, we grabbed two books previously, and we can place those two books in a particular bookcase, only in the ones that already had some books inside it with some letters on it. It says KRX, and we can turn that into Korax with the right books. However, that does lower a couple of the bookcases, which housed some dark bishops, but fortunately, we have a hammer, and they are very frail. So we can very easily dispatch of these dark bishops. I think there's one still alive. And we can now grab the puzzle item known as the Skull of Yorick. Yorick's Skull, rather. And we can go back through the bookcase from whence we came. Now there's a bunch of Ettons here. I'm just going to be axing here for a while. And then we will be following the right wall to the next room where we can actually use Yorick's Skull. 
which is going to be right there. There's a small little chapel waiting for us with a pretty substantial amount of dark bishops. There is an instant death pit waiting for us at the end of this chapel, so be careful you don't fall into that one. There is a small amount of Ettons that can help you out a little bit here, but for the most part you're going to have to do most of the work. You could probably lure some of the Ettons from outside in here, but it's not too difficult of a fight if you use your terrain well. There is some stained glass windows which we can destroy to get some of our quartz flask back since we have used a couple. There is one over here as well which doesn't have a quartz flask but it has a slaughter instead. And next to that it also has a switch to make this gap over the instant death pit. Build a bridge and makes it a little bit easier to get to this side. It wasn't really impossible since it's a very small jump over here. There's one more quartz flask over here and then one more combined mana power up behind this window. And one more slaughter waiting for us behind this stained glass window right here as well. Which was guarding a hammer, which is going to re rejuvenate our green mana. But we can use Yorick's skull right here. And if we wait a little bit, I'm also going to show off the second thing this does. But the first thing it does is going to create a small earthquake. And eventually the entire chapel more or less is gone. But as you can see, it also lowered a small thing in the water area with the singular stalker on it. I'm also walking over the edge of this pit right here to wake up a couple of gargoyles which are sitting in the bottom. Hopefully we can wake up all of them, otherwise we're just gonna have to go here with flight later, but it's nice to just get this out of the way. And since we're waiting anyway, let us go upstairs with our health power up in hand to fight a decent amount of slaughters. There's a couple of them hiding underneath a crusher um, and I wouldn't recommend starting the crusher for a variety of reasons but first gonna try to deal with the ranged attackers here because there's a actually quite a large amount of regular centaurs but there is a couple slaughters put into the mix as well but dealing with regular ones is a little bit easier than dealing with their stronger ranged counterparts there's also a bunch of dark bishops waiting for us over here. And they were in fighting a little bit with a singular centaur from the look of things. Ah, two centaurs actually. But it's nice to just get these out of the way as well. Can't quite hit them with a with the axe from there. But the crusher that I was talking about is right here. It is guarding a couple of quartz flasks. And if you walk forward, it's going to crush as a crusher does. And a fun thing about this crusher is if a slaughter is underneath it, the slaughter will probably start blocking and the crusher will still be trying to go down. And while it's not actually going down because the slaughter is invincible, it will still deal damage to you. And it can very easily kill you while the crusher is seemingly not even moving. So definitely a good idea to deal with the enemies first and then deal with the actual pickups which are waiting for us right there. Now one more thing to note is there is some quart uh, some flechettes up there, but if you try to grab them, it's going to crush down. And also over here, there is a wall which opens up to reveal a bunch of gargoyles. And it also turns on the lights in this room, or at least most of them. It makes some of them look a little bit odd, but for the most part, lights up the room. And we will get back to that later because there is a key up there which we cannot quite grab. So instead, let us just follow the right wall again to eventually get back to the middle and go inside the sewers, which are hiding behind a switch right here. Now there's a bunch of Ettons here. I will just run into this particular hole because that aggroes all of the Ettons at once. And also we can get to this switch, which is going to allow us to move forward in a little bit. But first, just going to deal with the Ettons. This is the exit back to the previous level. But over here there is a couple of stalker bosses waiting for us. And the main reason I pulled that switch is I think it raises the water here. And it allows you to actually go up here instead. Whereas otherwise the water is a little bit too low and I think you can't quite reach it normally. We can't really do too much here. I think we can try to use some discs of repulsion here maybe on the edges of this room. I don't know if that works but let's see if it does. Open up the wall on the outside there. I think we have caused some infighting, so that's good. But we're mostly here to collect a singular key, which is waiting for us somewhat up ahead. I just want to make sure that all of the centaurs and slaughters are gone. Plus, we can get some of our discs of repulsion back here as well. 
But there's still these two, which are almost permanently going to be fighting each other because their melee attacks are just not that powerful. But down here is the dungeon key. And that's really the only thing we can do in the swamp right now. So with the dungeon key in hand, we can leave through the exit right here. There is probably some mana waiting for us here as well, so let us replenish that a little bit. But with that, let us get out of here again to the bookcases once more, because there is another bookcase which we can use with a bunch of centaurs behind it. Now there is one slaughter inside this cage. When you kill this particular slaughter, it's going to lower this wall and reveal a small alleyway here with a couple of regular centaurs. There is an instant death pit right there, so watch out for that. You can push enemies into it, but it's not really worth the effort because it's a very tiny hole. But moving on, let us kill that centaur right there. We can use the dungeon key on this right here, but there's not that much we can do in this room until we have actually done a little bit more because this wall is currently in the way. So let's leave this place. You also actually have to touch the door with the lock on it, which might not be immediately obvious, but this does nothing. The other one does actually open. There is a health pick up there, but if you go over the bed, it's actually a crusher, so be careful of that. There is also a hammer right here, which you can use for your green mana. And you can use this bookcase to lower as an elevator, which isn't necessary per se, but it is nice to get some of the kills here. Plus, it gives you an angle on a couple of enemies which are waiting for us up there. Just a couple dark bishops, but it's nice to get those out of the way for now, so you don't have to deal with them later. Plus, there's some health down here as well, so there's some nice stuff that you can collect. Pull the switch to get back again. Hopefully that centaur didn't run too far away because uh, he did run and i think there was a second one as well but i'm not really sure what happened to that one maybe i imagined it i honestly don't know at this point either way there's a switch right here which we have to pull to open up the area in the dungeon key room but if you pull it it's going to lower the entire area before it so let us just jump out otherwise Instant death pit once again, and that's no good. It's just a tiny platform there in front of the button that you can actually stand on. But I like to have my chaos device in hand in case things go wrong. Pull this switch right here, and now there is a staircase in the room that opened up after killing the slaughter in the cage, which we can use for a couple things. There is a portal right here, and there is a small passageway, which if you attack the wall on the end, allows you to go back to the library, which occasionally has a respawn button in it, so it might be worth visiting. Now the dungeon... Uh, the dungeon, the dungeon, the dungeons. Um, this is where the routing gets a little peculiar. Um, for one is this guy right here. This is a sitting corpse. There is 34 of these in the level. And if you destroy all 34, you get a small optional prize. And weirdly enough, this is actually documented nowhere at the time of recording, so... This little archaeology experiment of a playthrough is starting to bear its fruits, which is nice. But let us destroy this one, and there will be 33 left. Usually those corpses are just used as set dressing, but this time around they actually serve a purpose, which is unusual. Uh, I will have a little counter just to make it a little bit more obvious uh, which ones are where, but for now we can only go to one location as this is entirely blocked off right now. Down here, there are eight of those sitting corpses waiting for us in the dark, and it might be possible that occasionally I destroy one by accident. So just keep that in mind, because they are effectively one hit point having creatures. So just uh, occasionally you might miss, miss one and see the counter go up without actually seeing me destroy one. It does happen. You can use the Ettons to get up top there as well, and you can skip a small room that way, but... I'm not going to bother with that. I will actually try to do this the regular way. Now, just killing some gargoyles here, and now we're going to deal with eight sitting corpses that are in this room. And we're just going to go around this room like it is. One right there. There's, I think, two over here usually. Maybe one got destroyed. Three, four, and then five, six... And then number seven and number eight. So with that, we are currently still on track to get all of them destroyed because it's very easy to miss one or destroy one by accident. This switch is going to open up the next room, which is right here. And right now, it is just a bunch of Ettons surrounding a large circle. Also, my screen turned entirely gray, uh, gray there for a second, which 
Not really sure what happened. And also there's this middle part with a bunch of prisons, which we can't currently do anything with. However, every time we press this switch, it's going to open one of the doors and also spawn a slaughter in the room that has opened. So I'm going to press the button four times. Uh, none of these are actually awake immediately, so let's just do this the old-fashioned way of throwing a bunch of flechettes into the room and not actually wake one up. There is also a sitting corpse right there. And let us actually wake up the last one, which is hiding in the last of the opened ones. You do actually need to open up each and every one of these prisons to continue, which uh, might not be immediately obvious that that's what the button does when you first press it, but you do actually have to press that same button seven times before being able to continue. So let's press it three more times. And I'm mostly doing this in sets of four and three, so it doesn't wake up everyone. There's another sitting corpse right there. And provided that you're just a little careful, you can destroy most of these, if not all of them, without ever waking them up, which is very convenient. But usually at the last one, might as well attack them and lose most of my health. But we do still have some Mystic Gardens available and might as well use them from time to time. Now that we've pressed all these switches, we can go back to the middle somewhere over here and we can press the switch right here to move on to the rest of the level. Now, since there are staircases available here, we can now more easily reach this little part. And next to a quartz flask, there is also a wall which you can open up, which leads to a combined mana power up. And you can do the same thing on the other side of the room as well. But I'm just going to show off that one because I don't really need to combine mana right now. Over here, there is an Eden and a small passageway which leads to another sitting corpse and a porculator. So let's grab that. And moving on is another small room with a bunch of slaughters inside it. Over here, you can use the walls to throw a couple flechettes in there. Uh, usually they won't actually hit you, which is nice. And provided you bounce off the flechettes properly, you can deal decent amount of damage to them without them really being able to do anything to you. There's two locked doors and there is a switch here which opens up one of the doors. And we can go here to kill another sitting corpse. And we can do the same thing with this, with this which will close the other door and open up this one. But there's only a disc of repulsion there. Also one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, let's go back a little bit before I forget again. Since we've done this part, from now on, uh, every time the Etten count in this level gets under 10, it is going to spawn seven Ettens, one in every single room. And that's going, it'll do that every 20 seconds that there are no Etten or less than 10 Ettens available. So that's going to make the routing even more weird a little bit later on, but you'll see that when it happens. You can do it a little bit sophisticated by, like, taking note of when you pull the switch and start the script, but. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a big mess of things, but we'll see that one when it happens. Over here, before I move on, actually, there is another sitting corpse right there. Very, very cleverly hidden, honestly. But moving on, another cleverly hidden one over here. It's inside this little jail cell, which you can attack it through the jails. There is a bunch of slaughters in this room. Uh, and if you're careful, you won't die, which is uh, my preferred method of doing it. But throwing a couple hammers at them is usually more than enough to deal with any issue in this game, and this is no exception. Let's grab a little bit of green mana right there. And just keep following the left wall. Where over here there is a couple of Ettens waiting for us. There is also some Slaughtars in this tiny room right here. And it's nice to just get these out of the way. You can cause a little bit of infighting usually with a Disc of Repulsion, but I'm just going to play this normally instead, just to get these out of the way because Otherwise, you have to kill them in a very narrow hallway, and it's just not the best, honestly. But moving on, over here, there should be a couple more Ettons still. One on that side and a couple more here. There is also a couple more sitting corpses waiting for us in this jail cell right here. One on that side and one on that side. And then there's this room, which uh, has an amount of sitting corpses, and uh, I'm just going to let the counter do the work, because quite frankly... Uh, a single flechette deals with this room rather well, but it does count for the 34 sitting corpses and is, uh, as you can imagine, the majority of them. Now, one less obvious thing is this wall, which is covered in some chains. It's actually a door. <laughs> that one's less obvious as well. It's a lot of 
not so obvious stuff going on in this level. But the main reason we were here was to push this switch, which is going to open up this hallway into the caves. And the caves have a couple of nasty things waiting for us. I'm actually going to grab my sword to deal with a couple of these Chaos Serpents. And when you kill the Chaos Serpents, it's going to open up a whole bunch of jail cells with Ethans inside them. One of the j these jail cells has a sitting corpse inside it. All the other ones do not. So once you find one of them, then you no longer need to continue looking, which is lovely. I think it's this one, and it is. And over here, there is once again a large quantity of mana, which you can use to refill everything. I've mostly been using blue mana here because the axe is just so good at dealing with all of your problems. There's also a switch here. I will get back to that in a bit. But for now, just a couple more Chaos Serpent once again. Let's wait for that Eden to die and then just use our sword again. Because it is very capable of dealing with the Ethans, but also the Chaos Serpents. And try not to die. Took a decent amount of damage there, but just gonna have to learn to live with it. Now moving on, I did say previously that there was only one prison with uh, sitting corpses and you could argue that that's not actually the case because this last one, which is also the way forward, does actually have one sitting in the corner right here. And then we're just gonna deal with a couple enemies here. There's one more on this side and there's one over there which I'll f save for the end hopefully unless a dark bishop destroys it by accident. There's one over there as well. And after dealing with all of these, destroy the one in the corner right here. And I want to say that that will be the last one, but I'm just making sure that I've gotten everything. But after destroying this and waiting possibly a little bit of time, it should spawn a Dark Servant right there, as you can see. And that is what you get for destroying all 34 sitting corpses. It's a fun little treat, and I will collect that Dark Servant a little bit later, but for now, I'm actually going to leave the dungeons and come back here later to deal with the remaining Ettons by going down the stairs where we came from and pulling that switch which we saw previously. That is going to open up this door, this wall rather, and it has a couple of enemies right here, most notably a couple of stalkers and a singular regular centaur. I'm just waiting for the stalker to actually stand up. And there we go. There is a second one behind him as well somewhere. It is rather dark, uh, which is meant to uh, hide the fact that there is a hole here. And if you fall down this hole, which is actually the intended method, you'll start screaming and you'll actually eventually progress to the next level. But due to the way the game works, you can also just kind of stand on the edge right there and that will work just as well. This puts us back in the sewers, and there is a couple things we can do here, which I'm not going to do just yet. First, I'm just going to deal with a bunch of Ettons, and I'm going to just take the quickest route out of here, which is this way through this newly opened door right here. There is a couple Chaos Serpents inside this room, and we're just going to sort all of them. Makes it rather easy and rather nice to deal with. Somehow dealt splash damage to that one, which woke him up. And there's five of them down here, and then there is a sixth one hidden behind this ring on the wall. You can use it as a door. And there is another one, and also a crater of might waiting for us right there. Now, there are two valves on this room's walls, one on each side. And when we pull this one first, Two of the pits of water starts to lower. We can grab a shield in this one, which is rather nice. We can then use this as a platform to get back up again. Eventually it will raise and we can go to the other one, which takes us to the portal that I mentioned very early on in this level behind the slightly lower waterway right here. And that is the main thing available. The main reason why that this um, is slightly lower simply because if we could go here immediately we could actually open up a door that's so late in the level and it gets us the final key that we need to even beat the hub so that's presumably why they changed it but it is a little sad because it is a an interesting route when we pull this to lower it once more this one goes nowhere so just don't take that and then this one goes to another ring which you can open up there is a hole here, which is an insta-kill hole, so be careful of that. And a Chaos Serpent, 
and let us deal with the stalkers that are inside this room here. Just gonna axe them all to death. And there is still a couple more things we can do in the sewers right now, uh, but I will save those for later because I think it makes it... There's a little bit of an interesting quirk uh, related to doing it a little bit later. I will lower this elevator and open up this door, which leads back to the start of the level. And I'm gonna grab those quartz flasks, which you can either do with these destructible mushrooms and just jumping on top of there. It can be a little fiddly, uh, just simply due to the fact that you just don't have that much room, but you can jump there. Otherwise, you can use this little waterfall to climb up, which is also a little fiddly for sure. You can also just wait until you have flight, but you can use this to go around the corner and get it that way. Just not as fun, honestly. But opening this is going to let you go into this place. It is once again the Forsaken Outpost where we previously didn't kill all the enemies. And there is a bunch of stained glass windows which I will just destroy and kill the Dark Bishops behind it. There's one with Boots of Speed behind it so that can be useful if you are an admirer of Boots of Speed. And one rather odd thing about this is something I'll get into in a second, but first let's kill these Dark Bishops. Rather easy when you have an axe that works that way. But there is a very skippable line dev here, and I guess they just intended for you to walk through the middle of this room, but in order to actually continue with the game, you have to walk through the middle of this, and then it'll say a door opened in the gibbet, which is sort of the main hub of this area. Also enemies I think can respawn over here, so Make note of that when you're looking for the remaining ones. And this is all the ammo I was talking about previously to be nice to have that available for later. And now is later and we have instantly replenished just about everything we were missing. So that is lovely. Now that the room has opened up in the gibbet, we can kill the remaining Ettons that have respawned at this point. There's a couple places where they can respawn and I'm guessing one of the places is going to be here. And it was, so that is convenient. With that, we have all the kills in the Forsaken Outpost, and we can now leave to the gibbet to go to the newly opened door. Which shouldn't be too much of a hassle. This brings us back to the castle. We actually have all the kills here, but something might respawn on the way back there to the gibbet. You can also press the button to teleport to that level uh, from the bottom of the elevator, and that's exactly what I'm going to do provided I can get there, and nothing respawned, so let us just press the switch with a little bit of difficulty and hear a door open up downstairs. Now there's a couple of gargoyles here now, uh, simply because I never killed them. They were the ones that were hiding inside the pit inside the chapel. God knows if we killed all of them at this point, but we'll see it at the end, I suppose. Not really gonna worry about it too much. Instead, we are going to go upstairs here, where the room this room with the Dark Bishop is now open. Going inside it is going to lower the axe key. And with the axe key we can go to the final area of this hub. Which we're gonna leave afterwards, but it's nice to just get this out of the way. Opening up the axe door. It is unopenable from the other side, which I feel like is worth mentioning. There is one way to open it, but it requires you to uh, kill an enemy. And it only works once, so keep that in mind. After going up there to grab the icon of the defender, it is going to wake up a whole bunch of gargoyles in this room. After killing the gargoyles, it's going to spawn four chaos serpents. And we have to lower that number to three and then wait for the doors on the outside of this room to open before killing the remaining ones. If you do not do this, you will be soft locked and you will not be able to complete the game. So let's do that. Kill one chaos serpent and then wait for the rooms on the outside here. It can take a while, unfortunately, and it's so easy to get soft locked because of it. But after they open, you can kill them with our sword this time around and then kill the dark bishops, which are waiting in these side rooms right here. It's such an unfortunate script that it requires the number to be three and that it only checks like every couple of seconds. So you can very easily get stuck there forever. But after killing these dark bishops right here, it is going to light up the room and also open up a door to our right, or rather the entire wall, which has another Heresiarch. And just like the previous Heresiarch, 
Uh, this one's looking in a direction where he cannot currently see us. I mean, the other one we have to do a little bit of work. This one just always looks in that direction. So let us finally start using these two Dark Servants, which we have collected in this playthrough so far. And we can get a third one back in the dungeons later. But let's toss one on both sides. You can use a, um, a whatchamacallit, a flechettes on this guy as well. But they tend to drop in the lava and then just disappear. There is also a flight power-up that this enemy is guarding, so be careful of that. And unfortunately, he went into a pain state rather quickly, so he's just going to be fighting here for a little bit while the Molotars are unable to do anything. But it at least shows off what the power-up does, and I think it is a fun way to use him. Because against regular enemies, it never really feels quite worth it. But for now, hopefully they did manage to get some damage done at least, and in a second, while well, waiting for these things to disappear, I will just attack them with the sword. Now, it might be useful to use a uh, Crater of Might here if needed, because it's very possible I'm going to run out of mana here. But we'll see. Hopefully not. But also, after the boss dies, it is going to open up the Axe Door. And that's worth mentioning, simply because after it closes again, you will not be able to open it again from this side, and you'll have to use a Chaos device to leave this place. So just be wary of that. I'm just going to kill the Dark Bishops that he's actually spawning this time around. And I think I will actually use a Crater of Might here, just because my green mana is so low, and we have 10 of them available anyway. And I'm just going to throw hammers in that direction. God, he does not want to get hit today. And it's like that sometimes. This, this is the worst case scenario when dealing with the Heresiarch with the fighter, unfortunately, where he just uses the spinning cubes attack forever and you just have to wait here for a while and occasionally you can see a hammer fly at you and you're worried about your life. But provided we just keep killing enemies and... jeez. Provided we keep killing enemies and we just wait around here for a while, uh, we could just stay here for a second and he won't really be able to do anything, which... It's kind of nice, but it, it is unfortunately tedious from time to time. But they're gone. Let's see. Immediately after one attack, use the cube attack again. And uh, I'm surprised he's not dead yet, honestly, because he has been spawning Dark Bishops for a while now. And the sword does deal a decent chunk of damage to him every single time. But it is what it is. And there we go. That opens the door up again. So let's just use that. I will just keep these Dark Bishops alive, probably, because... Well, that one exploded. Don't know if there's any other ones. Hopefully not, because I can't really hear it. There's still five enemies remaining. Uh, there's at least one Etten. I will just fly over this one more time, just in case, to make sure that all the Gargoyles have, in fact, woken up. And I will just be going on a Etten hunt as well. Judging from the fact that there is a Gargoyle right here, I'm going to assume that they've probably all woken up. And I'm just going to have to check the upper areas here and some of the other rooms. There is also the possibility that there is a Dark Bishop alive. And I think there is one behind there. So just be wary of that. And I might check out the library in a second. But we also still have to deal with the dungeons and the sewers as well in terms of killing all the enemies. So let's go in here. It does tend to have enemies spawn inside here. So... It's very possible that the last remaining enemies are just two of the Dark Bishops that were summoned by the Heresiarch. So if there's nothing over here, I will just go inside the sewers, because that is the first of two areas. Also watch out that you do not get crushed by the spinning bookcase. It can very easily happen, unfortunately. I suppose one thing I could do uh, is just open this and just make sure that I kill the enemies before the door closes. But I'm going to say that there's probably not another Dark Bishop in there. So I'm going to raise my volume a little bit and look for the last remaining enemy. And I did just hear a gargoyle, so it is likely that a gargoyle was, in fact, flying around somewhere. There we go. Problem solved. That's all kills in this level. So now we just have to deal with the sewers and the dungeons. The sewers uh, has a couple interesting things. First of all, this has opened a while ago. We could have gone here at any time, really, um, after, I think, doing basically the last steps in the sewers. But 
I like to just save this for now, just so there's a couple more things here left to do. Waiting for this one to actually wake up. There's a couple stalker bosses in here that we'd like to remove. There is some walls with rings that you can open. One with a torch right here. There is one wall with a ring you cannot open, but you can open it from a distance, which I will do in just a second because there is a switch here behind that ring wall that lowers this, which is only relevant in deathmatch, but it also lowers this one right here with some dragon skin bracers behind it, which is useful for just about any class, really. There is also this ring wall right here, which opens up to a small little forest, a couple trees and a couple of ethans waiting for us. I will just fly up here because there's a small elevator there, but it goes up and down rather weirdly. And down here is a porculator and an elevator, which immediately raises to get you trapped for just a second there. But there is another path that we have not yet accessed. And that path is right here. There is also an Eton still alive, and it has a tendency of respawning one over here. And then we'll just deal with some of the respawned enemies right now, just so I won't have to deal with them a little bit later. But it can be difficult to tell here because everything is just very close to each other. Uh, and you can hear everyone everywhere all the time, but it looks like it's just this one. Which is no problem at all. But let us go to the one path that we haven't actually visited yet. It is right here. Uh, we came from the dungeons here, and this leads to a path that we haven't visited. There's a couple stalkers here, but that's not too big of a deal, provided you're somewhat careful. There we go. And usually, what you're supposed to do is... I'm just gonna sit comfortably. Usually, you're supposed to press this valve, and it's going to close this thing, raise the water, do a bunch of cool stuff. But since we have flight, we can go up immediately and push the valve that lowers the water instead. And if you haven't pushed the one that actually raises it, this causes some interesting effects because it will actually lower the water, but it's just all untextured and doesn't really work very well. And it creates some interesting visual effects. If I pull this valve now, it's going to close the door and you'll be soft locked. so don't do that, obviously, unless you use a chaos device. But a second effect of that top valve is that it opens this door which allows you to go back to the dungeons. And since we're done with all kills there anyway, we might as well try and get all kills in the dungeons now. Now, as I said previously, this might be a little bit tricky simply because you have to deal with the respawning Ethans plus the regular respawning enemies as well. But my strategy is uh, very sophisticated and it's called using the sword a lot. Now, one way you could do this is by just simply using flechettes a lot because you wouldn't be waking up the enemies inside the prisons and that way, uh, when they respawn every 20 seconds, it won't actually respawn them because their teleporter is blocked by well, another Eton that's already respawned and he won't be moving. But my strategy is called, I have a sword and a lot of uh, craters of might, and as such, I can just attack a whole bunch with the strongest weapon that I have available. Um, this can unfortunately lead to some mana problems, but... It might also have a slight disadvantage that there is a, an Eton somewhere still in the level that's not currently here. And then we have to look for that before trying this again, unfortunately. But we're missing one enemy. And that one can be in some rather inconvenient places. <laughs> uh, fortunately, he was right here. So I'm hoping that was actually the last one. And now I will just spin around the circle probably two more times and hopefully quickly leave the level with all kills. Uh, provided that we are quick enough. But with flight, uh, we should be able to reach that just fine. And I like to do this now just because this exit portal, the one that actually just leads back to how we entered the dungeons initially, um, is just a little bit closer to the start there and I was just a little bit too slow so let's just do that one more time and I think I just heard some regular enemies respawn as well so it was a bit unfortunate that I didn't quite find the enemies quick enough because now three enemies have respawned in the level so let us just deal with those the unfortunate thing is is that these enemies do just respawn in, in what you could call the worst places. So let's just throw some flechettes over there. Hopefully we haven't woken up the enemies 
inside the prison cells right now just yet. And we can deal with these remaining three with flechettes, or two rather at this point. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not 100% certain where they respawn, so I'm just going to go fully based on sound right now. I know one of them respawns in here, inside this prison cell, uh, which I'm just going to throw some more flechettes at. And then another one, uh, not here, but rather in the other room right here is where one tends to respawn. And that appears to be the case this time as well. So we'll actually just wake up all of the remaining ones right now. I will once again follow the circle. Just try to kill them like this. One kind of interesting thing to note as well is that if there are more than 10 Ethans, the moment the script checks, at that point it's going to check every 6 seconds until it can actually spawn something. <laughs> so, all in all, it is rather nasty when trying to get a nicely completed amount of kills. But we have all kills now. And I'm gonna say that I didn't hear anything respawn. And I'm just gonna call it a day. We have all kills here as well. And with that, we can leave this ridiculous hub behind. And say we got all the kills and probably all the secret things as well, honestly. I actually forgot to pick up that Dark Servant, unfortunately. So you could argue that we didn't actually get all the secrets, but hopefully I can just simply re-edit this in a way that I get a little side window that says I did pick it up and then just uh, leave with it. And surely that's going to happen. And he shall journey into the realms of the dead and contest with the forces therein unto the very gates of despair. But whether he shall return again to the world of light, no man knows. Damn. And that is the end of Hub 4. For me, this is probably the most memorable one, and I just think the design of it is really cool. Geographically, it seems a bit implausible, but overall, I think the whole castle design, I think it's just really nicely done, and there's a whole bunch of different, different like facets to the castle, and all these little things that add up. I think on a casual playthrough, a little bit more frustrating simply due to the fact that there's a lot of doors which are not obvious at all and a lot of different little passageways that you can enter that are optional and that might not be immediately obvious. But having played this a couple times, it's definitely one of my favorite hubs. I hope you all enjoyed it. Next time we play, we will be going through the fifth and final hub of Hexen, and I hope to see you all there. Bye bye. <laughs>